Good evening, citizens of Portsmouth, my colleagues on city council, city staff, and guests. I will now ask everyone to stand for a moment of silence following the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I will now ask my colleagues to please note your attendance electronically. Six members of city council are present. Thank you, ma'am. And we do have the minutes of a called meeting on November 13th, 2023, a called meeting on November 14th, 2023, and a regular meeting on November 14th, 2023. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Move adoption. Second. Would you please vote electronically? The minutes are adopted 6 0. Moving on to the next <coughs> agenda item, we do have a presentation. And I would ask that Rivers Casino Portsmouth, the team from Rivers Casino Portsmouth, please come forward. says it's on, but I, I don't hear it. It's on. Is it on? Okay. Very good. The most important part of what we do is recognize that those in our community who give back. And so it is with this. To Mr. Roy Corby, General Manager of Rivers Casino Portsmouth, and his team, I present this to you. Dear Mr. Corby, as Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, and, be, and on behalf of my City Council colleagues, I am delighted to have an opportunity to congratulate you on being named an honoree of the Civic 50 Hampton Roads by Volunteer Hampton Roads and Points of Light, the world's largest organization dedicated to volunteer service. The award rec recognizes Rivers Casino Portsmouth as one of the most community-minded companies in Hampton Roads determined by an independently administered and scored survey. The Civic 50 Hampton Roads Initiative, modeled after Points of Light's national program, provides a standard for superior corporate citizenship and showcases how companies can use their time, skills, and resources to drive social impact in their company and communities. Rivers Casino Portsmouth, dedication to community service that extends through Rivers Gives, the casino's ongoing community engagement initiative that includes volunteerism, board service, in-kind contributions, corporate giving, and donation drives. To date, Rivers Casino Portsmouth has donated over $775,000 through corporate giving and more than eight. 175 volunteer hours. <laughs> Mr. Corby and his team, thank you for all that you have done and continue to do for the city of Portsmouth and Hampton Roads. Congratulations, sir. If you'd like to make comments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Burton, Lucas Burke, thank you, City Council members. We certainly appreciate it, members of the community. Um, I couldn't be prouder of the company I work for and the team that's here with me today. Um, whenever Melissa, our director of community engagement, um, 
puts together projects for us and volunteer opportunities. We generally look for 20 to 30 team members to volunteer, and we always end up with over 40 looking uh, to join the effort. So uh, my whole team, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you. And thank you for the community for embracing us the way you have. Okay. Thanks again. And you all are welcome to stay for the remainder of the meeting if you so choose. Madam Clerk, would you please read the council rules requiring speakers? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light here beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments <clears throat> excuse me, should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to the city council as a body rather than to any particular member of city council, staff, or the audience, and should be limited to matters that only the Portsmouth City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We've now come to the item on our agenda, City Manager's Report, item 23-385. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting developmental disability residential uh, support funds in the amount of $9,990 from the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services and appropriating said amount in the FY 2024 Behavioral Health Care Service Fund to provide support for individuals diagnosed with an intellectual or developmental disability. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, would you please vote electronically? <clears throat> this item is adopted 6-0. Thank you, ma'am. Item 23-386. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting an emergency management program grant in the amount of $57,992 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said amount in the FY 2024 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services. Thank you, ma'am. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Council members, would you please vote electronically? This item is adopted 6-0. Item 23-387, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting state homeland security program grant funds in the amount of $53,800 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said amount in the FY 2024 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Is there, is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, would you please vote electronically? This item is adopted 6 0. Item 23 388. <laughs> and Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? An ordinance accepting hazmat response cost recovery funding in the amount of $923.52 um, from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said funds in the FY 2024 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? 
Seeing none, please vote electronically. This item is adopted 6 0. Next item, item 23 389. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? An ordinance to amend Chapter 22, Motor Vehicles and Traffic of the Code of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, by adding a new Article 17 authorizing the use of red light cameras for traffic enforcement. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council Oops. members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Please vote electronically. This item is adopted 6-0. Item 23-390, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance to amend Chapter 22, Motor Vehicles and Traffic of the Code of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, by adding a new Article 18, authorizing the use of school board bus video monitoring systems to enforce their prohibition on passing stop school buses. Thank you, ma'am. We are in need of a motion, Dennis. Second. Move for second. adoption. Second. second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, please vote electronically. This item is adopted 6-0. Next item, item 23-391A. <coughs> and Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution we are considering on item A? Yes, sir. Resolution endorsing the city's 2024 General Assembly legislative package. Council members, we are need a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Councilman Hugel, sir, you have the floor. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so it's uh, not a secret that we have a significant significant portion of our uh, property inside the boundaries of the city that are federally owned property that we don't collect uh, property tax on. <clears throat> Federal government passed a law back in 1976 titled Payment in Lieu of Taxes. Uh, and uh, that law uh, allows for counties and cities to collect payment from the federal government for federal property uh, if it's creating a financial burden on the city. Uh, I'm not sure that we're eligible, and so if it's uh, uh, the consent and uh, consensus of council, I'd like to ask the city attorney to investigate and determine if we are eligible to request payment for in lieu of taxes from the federal government uh, on behalf of the federal property that we have here in town be ashamed to uh, not ask if we're eligible to ask thank you sir and councilman moody sir you have the floor thank you thank you mayor i agree with my colleague there is some history on that uh, former councilman uh, uh, pitts uh, that was a pet peeve of his for a number of years and uh, madam city attorney there may be some some record uh, of the outcome of that. Obviously, we haven't been receiving any federal money uh, for payment in lieu of taxes, but uh, uh, no yesterday doesn't necessarily mean no today. So I support that. Thank you, sir. So the, the, the ask for consent was to move forward with asking the city attorney to provide the information and, and ask for us to get a payment in lieu of taxes. And if you could all show your agreement with the consensus by your hands, showing your hands. The consensus is noted. Um, the attorney will go forward mm -hmm. and bring back that information yeah. for our, our decision or our review. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, please vote electronically. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This item is adopted 
Item B, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution for item B that we're considering? Yes, sir. Resolution endorsing the city's 2024 federal legislative package for the 118th Congress. Do we have a motion and a second? Move for adoption. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, would you please vote electronically? This item is adopted 6 0. We have now come to the item, agenda item of new business, item 23 392, boards and commissions. And Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. Mayor, I, I move that the following uh, reappointments and appointments be approved. The uh, first, the uh, reappointments Kathleen Cullen to the Museum and Fine Arts Commission. Annette McSwain and Ron Peterman to the Portsmouth Port and Industrial Commission. Now we have uh, new appointments. Behavioral Health Care Services Advisory Board, Wanda Hazel. Board of Zoning Appeals, Mia Phillips. Community Policy and Management Team, Alejandro Torres. Economic Development Authority, Matthew James. History Commission, Robert Cross and Robert Austin. Historic Preservation Commission, Pandagorius Batistados. Library Board, Sandra Nicholson. Museum and Fine Arts Commission, Rosa Jones Williams, Joseph Brown, Kenyatta Handy. Newport Development Authority, Courtney Skinner. Parks and Recreation Commission, Tony Fogel. Hmm? No, no, I haven't got there yet. Yeah. No, you do. You passed it. Oh. I'm, I'm told I missed a name under the Museum and Fine Arts mm -hmm. Commission. Talk okay. page five. Let's see. Well, keep going. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had uh, Joseph Brown and Kenyatta Handy, and Rosa Jones Williams, and Courtney. Uh, nope. Uh, Dante uh, Owens. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see where we left off here. All right. Uh, Portsmouth Port Industrial Commission. Ed Barham and Keith Rice, Portsmouth Supplemental Retirement Board, Mary Smith, Ms. Gutter. Thank, thank you, sir. We have the motion and the second. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, would you please vote electronically? This item is adopted 6-0. Thank you, ma'am. Our next item, item 23-393, items submitted by council members. And Dr. Whitaker, you have the floor, sir. Yes, um, this is for the city attorney. Just uh, follow up on uh, two issues, the uh, compliance review um, with Elizabeth Minor, uh, Department of Taxation. Uh, where are we on that? We have had our interview with the taxation department and we will present, um, we're following up some information provided to us in that. And so we will, um, once we've done with that, we'll be able to present back and a report back to you all on that issue. You, you have a timeline on when that's going to be? Yes. Um, I anticipate that we should be able to get it done before the new year. Okay. All right. And then the um, Pinnace Point uh, remedial issue. Okay. That will take a little bit longer. Thank you for that. Um, we have been in touch with this Dr. Cassandra Newby-Alexander, 
who has provided us with a number of resources um, in both the restorative justice and the uh, reparative justice areas. We've also um, touched base with a number of community organizations outside of our locality who have done this type of work uh, in the Charlottesville area and Richmond area, and we have reached out to them and they have provided us with resources, and so we're looking through that. That will take us after the new year because we're coordinating with meeting with those individuals as well to provide some um, a, um, a database of potential remedies that the city can pursue. So um, you need to consult with uh, community groups to determine how to address uh, past harm? We are consulting with community groups that have addressed this issue in their own communities to see if what they've done is a fit for our community and then present that to and potentially have them come and present to, to council. You pertaining to past harm? It's pertaining to the facts that have been presented with uh, that Cassandra Newby Alexander presented in her report as well as the reporting that we've provided to council. Right. Well, her, her report isn't just the standard. The, the issue uh, pertains to how do we correct past harm? Um, some of her report dealt with some things we should do in the future, but I'm talking about remedying uh, past harm that persons have incurred. Um, yes, sir. In your um, request of us, it was both the, the past harms and uh, addressing what we could do in the future to prevent other actions, and so we're looking at the full scope of that. Yeah, not my my request was dealing with the past harm, and I know. so um, that's what I'm trying to figure. The community groups that you're speaking with, they're giving you insight on past harm. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, and also the I just want to be clear on because we spent a lot of time on the ask, and the ask was a collaboration of a number of individuals. So if I'm only looking at p past harms, I would need this council to indicate that to me tonight. Otherwise, we spend a considerable amount of time on both reparative and restorative justice. Well, I think there was I think I me. think there was quite a bit of discussion on the future and and okay. what council can do Absolutely. on this wise. I'm not I'm not uh, saying that didn't take place. Okay. I'm just saying that uh, these community groups because I find it I find it interesting you talking to community groups about a legal remedy of past harm. That's what I explained to you before. It's, 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 it's not primarily legal. A lot of it applies to what is available based on the facts and circumstances presented in our community that have matched other communities. And so in order to get an idea of exactly what we can do here, mm -hmm. one of the suggestions that the council that you all made in, uh, were that we should look at other communities that have had similar circumstances. Suggested to me was Chicago, um, Detroit. Those were very specific locations that were given to us, and so that's exactly what we did. So when I'm talking about those communities, I'm not just talking about small community organizations. I'm talking about those entities that have dealt with this issue and what they've done. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, Ms. Mayor, my last comment uh, pertains to the uh, report that we received during our public work session uh, regarding the disparity study. And I just want to make sure I go on uh, record here at our regular meeting um, pertaining to uh, how egregious the discrimination uh, that was reported um, that has occurred uh, to uh, African American, Hispanic, Asian businesses, um, particularly concerning uh, given um, the fact that this is a majority black city and to see a report that says $515 million has been spent in procurement by this city and of that $515 million only 1% uh, has gone to African American businesses. Uh, that, is, that is highly troubling. And it is something that has been perpetuated, not just within this time period of this study, but it, it predates um, even our previous study. Um, my, my concern is that there appears to be uh, an attempt to ignore uh, what has occurred. Uh, policies have not been followed. Uh, recommendations were not followed. Um, we hear no 
uh, type of voice from our economic development on this issue. Um, Mr. Mayor, you have mentioned at uh, several meetings uh, you have a saying that we are winning. And I questioned that in the past, who is this we? And uh, based on what I'm seeing, the neglect that we've seen in our communities, um, this type of intentional neglect of contracting with minority businesses, it leads to other uh, disparities that we see in our city uh, when it comes to issues of crime, uh, when you uh, have high poverty and you see intentional acts by city in depressing the economic opportunities of persons, there's no way we can conclude with those intentional acts that we are winning unless that we is specifically talking about uh, white contractors uh, who are getting 97% of the contracts in this city. Um, if that's the we you're talking about, then yeah, yeah they're winning. Um, but I would say a significant portion of this city is losing when it comes to economic opportunities. And it's not just in the public sector. That report showed that we also face the same type of discrimination in the private sector. And unless this council is willing to take intentional acts to address it, and our city attorney is willing to put the teeth into policies that will address it, we're gonna stay at this same position as long as our citizens stay silent and allow for this atrocity to continue. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a question um, to, I guess, our city manager, um, and I know council members have probably received an email as well. There's a property at Elm and South Street. It's like a triangle uh, where there's um, trucks popped on there. Um, was brought to my attention by uh, Civic League President, Mr. Lawrence Oves. And um, I think we had this issue before once time when the grass wasn't cut. Um, and I don't know who owns the property, but I guess it's an eyesore. I drove by there today, and there are lots of trucks and truck beds and old tires uh, that are stored out there. Um, don't know how we get a solution to yeah. You got it. It's, it's, thank you for bringing that up. Yesterday, um, we've, that's been the topic of our discussion between the police department and permits uh, on my way to work yesterday. Uh, that was an eyesore coming in. Mm -hmm. And the property is owned by a resident as well as a company. Okay. And so we're taking the measures to have those uh, trailers removed. Okay. And we've had complaints and we're doing something about it. Okay, thanks. And my second um, question is, um, I know that our sheriff had um, issued a statement or a letter to council regarding the supplemental options um, that were offered to part-time employees. And I think he wanted to do some renegotiation, not that a supplement be offered, but just something, a one-time bonus or something to those part-time employees who are driving our juveniles back and forth across the state, um, spending a lot of time and hours just so some type of appreciation. And, and I, I guess he was looking uh, for council to make a decision on whether they could review that again to see if that bonus or um, not the supplement, because I know that the part-time persons don't get a supplement, so we're not adding a supplement, but something. Um, so if it's the pleasure of council, if we could take a look at that um, in speaking with the sheriff and seeing how they move some funds around. I think he even wanted to renegotiate um, what the full-time employees and uh, other citizens were getting so that the part-time employees could get something. So the, the full-time, the stat, they've already, those checks have been deposited mm -hmm. already. And so what I could do, at the, if it pleases council, I will provide so that you can make a determination on how you want to move forward, what that looks like dollar-wise. Yes. Because all of the funds that we use were exhausted pretty much to the dollar. Okay. So I can provide that and council can tell me how to move forward. Okay. And then my last question is um, probably everyone is getting a lot of calls. Now the temperatures are dropping uh, with homeless uh, people. And I know that we're going to be building the shelter. And I know that those plans are underway. And you know, we're nowhere near uh, pro providing that, but are there any vacant buildings or some kind of alternate option that we could use to assist uh, those organizations who are helping people 
who are homeless, especially during these freezing uh, temperatures. So I have a couple of things that I probably, that I'm gonna have to bring to council so that we can make some informed decisions. And what I probably will, what I will do is another closed session so that we can discuss some of those things at hand because we have some additional competing priorities as it relates to housing for even our youth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I could please bring that back to council um, in a closed work session. Uh huh. It, it just <laughs> okay. Thank you. Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. Thank, thank you, Mayor. I, I want to comment on uh, the possibility of uh, providing bonuses or additional compensation to part time employees. I believe the city also has part-time employees. And I, I think we gotta be mighty careful of what we do. I wouldn't wanna see the city employees left out. But I, th I think we're opening a Pandora's box if we s start compensating part-time employees with additional benefits. Uh, there, there's a fine line between being part-time and, and being full-time, so uh, I think we need to look at that long and hard, uh, and, and maybe even from a legal standpoint. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other items submitted by Council? Dr. Whitaker, you have the floor. Yes, this is for the city attorney. There's one more issue. Um, the uh, historical designation of the Mount Hermon Park, now the uh, Bernard Griffin Park, um, where is the city on that? That we are working with the planning, uh, was it planning department, yeah. right? Yeah, planning department on that issue, and we'll follow up as soon as we have. They're still working through it, so okay. we'll, we'll follow up with you. Okay. But they are working on it. All right, thank you. And I want to thank the uh, city manager yes, for taking care yes. of that sprinkler yes. situation. Yes. All right. And, and also allowing us to piggyback on her team to help us with the designation. Thank you. Yes. Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Some time ago, matter of fact, it may have been as much as a year ago, I brought the council's attention that we do not have a way to recognize honorables uh, with street names. Uh, we have Missy Elliott, who's our most recent uh, honorable. Uh, the street that was named after her just happened to be a street that there were no residential properties and uh, none or very little commercial properties. So it, uh, it didn't cause an inconvenience or an expense for anyone. But uh, about a year ago, after I brought the subject up, council even took a look at uh, some uh, suggestions and some uh, signage that other cities use. But we're, we're way past time as a city. We have a lot of notables. And, and without changing the street name, there's a way you can designate a street as in recognition of uh, honorable uh, without changing the real street name. And it, some of my colleagues may remember that presentation and that discussion, but we, we definitely as a city need to move forward with that. We have too many people that are deserving of some recognition. Uh, and uh, if there's consensus, I would like for this city manager to refresh that presentation and present this council with some options once again. Okay, sir, you have heard the request um, from our colleague, Councilman Moody. Do we have a consensus by show of hands to move forward in that way? Can I just um, comment, Ms. Mayor? You have the floor, that, sir. That there there are a lot more pressing issues that um, we have before us. Um, I would think that that would be put off at a later time um, and deal with some of the more pressing issues. That, there, haven't, there haven't been any requests that have come before the city um, that, that would be Maybe. necessary at this time. So I was just saying, particularly because we're 
moving into new year budget season, those I would I would think we would want to deal with more pertinent issues. Mayor, was there a consensus? I believe there was, but Madam Clerk, was there a consensus on on that last request? Okay, so we'll put it we'll put it to the to the group again. Um, Mr. Moody asked for a consensus to have some information brought back in regards to how we recognize notables. Mm -hmm. And there's four people who raised their hand. So that constitutes a consensus. Mr. Moody, you have the floor, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you all. One of the things I did want to mention, I hope everyone had an enjoyable Thanksgiving holiday. And one of the things that we are doing in our city to celebrate the holidays, you know that we have the Coleman Collection downtown. In addition to our Parks and Rec Department has created holiday lights at City Park. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to partake or take your family or your grandchildren to the holiday lights, but it's a wonderful opportunity to go to City Park ride pokey smoky and really enjoy the spirit of the holidays i even understand that they have hot chocolate out there uh, so i would encourage all of our citizens really it's a wonderful way to celebrate the holidays and so just wanted to make sure that i mentioned that for everyone's information our next item item 23-394 report on pending items is there any report on pending items, ma'am? No, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Item 23-395, non-agenda speakers. Madam Clerk, would you please read the speaker statement? Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to the city council as a body rather than to any particular member of city council, staff, or the audience, and should be limited to matters that only the Portsmouth City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Our first speaker this evening is Kirby Steining. Mr. Steining, if you would come forward and state your name and address, you will have five minutes. Kirby Steining. Okay. We'll move to the next speaker. Our next speaker is Ms. Sheila Joseph. Ma'am, if you would come forward, state your name and address, you will have five minutes. One thirty nine Grand Street, Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, I listed on the topic of transformers in the community and happen to be several communities and different communities that I have videotaped that how sometimes lightning and thundering over the years strikes it and make it burn. And I'm gonna use one for an example where I live. Um, the transformer, a lot of people don't understand what a transformer does to in their home until I found out and did research for myself and then I found out by the receptacles not working, damage to the TV and other things to my refrigerator and freezer, it was malfunctioning. So one day when I did the troubleshoot, someone brought it to my attention to go to the website to Google why these things happen. So I did it. And I contact uh, Dominion um, Energy. 
and they came out and investigated, saw it won't my meter, and they said you have underground service. And so they went up to the pole by the transformer and um, they found out it was some things going on up there and they came back down, it started back working again. I can say that I've been 33 years returned back where I'm at and what's been happening is the transformer is totally burnt, but sometimes they have to come back and recheck. And what I'm saying with the infrastructure money, they've been fixing um, transformers down by the uh, Jim Carroll commercial place, it's Bobby Shops or whatever, and then on Portsmouth Boulevard down the street from me, they put new transformer, I videoed that. Then on Florida Avenue, I videoed that in different areas. And so I keep questioning why is on Lincoln and Deep Creek where Holy Light Church is at, the telegram pole is le uh, leaning. And I remember I used to be a member there and lightning struck it <coughs> and a fire happened at that church. But this, this telegram pole and the transformer is still there. I noticed throughout down the street, there are old telegram poles, and then I see some of them in Cavalier Manor. They are burnt, and I uh, happen to know some people off in Tazewell um, Street. And uh, I'm just seeing that the, the communities, I hate to keep saying it, but it's true, is not being served to change out and update things like I thought it would be doing. And I just want to know, are y'all aware that have anybody brought it to your attention before other than me about these transformers are old and outdated? Some of them, if you go and research, it says up to 20 years, you know, on the site that you know, it might last. Well, this one I have been 30 some years and they don't see fit. They said the old one might be, you know, better than the new ones. I just wanted to see if y'all address the old telegram pole. They look like they about to fall over. And I want to finish my thought before the time run out. Um, trees hanging over the street. And I noticed going to, um, Churchland, and when the pastor was giving out gas, we was in line, and I said, dang, this is real terrible. You know, it's dangerous. The wires are all up in the trees, and I know every three years, Dominion supposed to be paid by the city or whoever to um, cut those limbs back like they used to do on the one that they cut down on my street, and I'm glad they cut it down so they you know, won't have to worry about spending that extra money. But we could save a lot of money if we cut these trees that is very dangerous to us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mayor. Dr. Whitaker, you have the it's floor, sir. You know, city man, is the transformer uh, issue in the poll, is that a city issue or Dominion, Virginia? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Mr. Merle Rutledge. Mr. Rutledge, sir, if you would come forward, state your name and address, you will have five minutes, sir. Hello. My name is Merle Rutledge. 2024 Conservative Way, Republican Virginia is my address. I have seen y'all fight more for a golf course than y'all do for police, firefighters, and EMTs. I have seen y'all fight more for a golf course than you have for the citizens wrong at Sugar Hill. I have seen y'all fight more for a golf course 
than you do for victims of crime. I also seen y'all fight more for a golf course than you do for the homeless and those who are starving for leadership. It seems like people didn't learn the lesson from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We need leaders in love with people more than we do leaders that's in love with money. I see us all in this room ignoring the fact of all the murders going on. Our police officers being stretched thin, the community irritated and frustrated as they see justice long denied. And leaders are not facing the fact that we are facing a situation we have never faced before and we are expending our time trying to figure out where funding comes from when people lack funds in their pockets. I wish I could talk about things in a better way and hopefully address every single concern that everybody in this room may have. But the fact is our major concern isn't about money. Our major concern is about safety and where our eyes wake up tomorrow, hopefully free and living, not closed and underground. And it seems like too many of y'all had died a thousand deaths, but I'm gonna sit up here and die only one. I'm gonna keep fighting for people no matter what. I'm gonna keep bringing up the homeless issue. I'm gonna keep bringing up the suicides. I'm gonna keep bringing up the overdoses. I'm gonna keep bringing up murderers walking free. I'm gonna keep bringing up Sugar Hill. And thank you, Mr. Whitaker, for speaking up. Sometimes we just gotta do the right thing. We all wake up even every single day. We can't bring that fancy house, fancy cars, or that developer or that investor with us. The people need for you to invest in them. Take on their real concerns. Their real concern right now is where we move forward from here. And hopefully y'all wake up. Hopefully we all wake up. The eyes been closed for far too long to the blindness of what we are becoming. We are becoming people who don't even listen to each other, talk to each other. You could go to a restaurant anywhere around here. You talk to a kiosk before you talk to somebody worse there. They got feelings too. They have good days and bad days too. So do you. And hopefully, as I look in all y'all eyes at this time period, y'all need to make the decision. Do we wake up tomorrow and we gonna act in a serious manner to address the concerns that doesn't deal with shoe strings or somebody playing our strings? because this city is falling apart. Virginia is falling apart. America is falling apart. And it's about time somebody talks about bringing us all together. We are in this together. If they are hungry, we are starving. Hopefully that fills you up and gives you the energy and motivation and courage that we are all here facing the same situation. The police need your help. The community needs your help. It's time not to just sit up there, it's time to go down there. You'll remember what leadership means, what it means to be accountable and speak for people. Because right now people don't recognize that. We see you speak for a casino, we see you speak for a golf course. Where are you going to speak for us? God bless you. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Kevin Holloman. Kevin, if you would come forward, state your name and address, sir. You will have five minutes. Hey, how y'all doing today, Council? Good, how are you? Could you please bring the microphone closer to your mouth so we can hear you? Can you hear me now? Yes, very good. 
Uh, my name is Kevin Holloman. I'm a 23-year-old entrepreneur, uh, founder of United Youth Foundation Leaders. And we're providing productive programs, activity that's keeping the youth off the streets, uh, letting them know they got other options other than being in the streets. We have pilot mentorship programs, teaching kids self-development skills, uh, entrepreneur seminars, teaching them the basics of entrepreneurship and direct sales. Then we have sports, football, basketball, baseball, cheerleading, and annual talent shows, just giving them activities, um, just guiding them in the right direction and giving them support with it because I lost my mom when I was eight. I didn't have my father in my life. I grew up in a system, group homes, detention centers, jail, penitentiary. I just came home last year. And now I have my box trucking company, my 501c3, and my nonprofit. And I'm actually expanding and trying to get resources and uh, like help from the city to actually expand our communities and so we can impact the youth. Because even my story is a walking testimony. And I just want to be the advocate for the youth and letting them know no matter where you come from, you are the creator of your story. And that's what I'm here. I'm actually asking uh, for help for the council. If we can get some resources, some tools anywhere we uh, like, so we can set programs and curriculum over here in this city. Because I'm actually from North. I've already been starting it. Uh, our programs, our pilot mentorship programs and been impacting our, our kids. These are my mentees back there. And we actually trying to expand our curriculum over here in Portsmouth. Thank you, sir. Okay. Dr. Whitaker, you have so, the floor. Ms. Holloman. Ms. Holloman. You can come back to the mic. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, appreciate, appreciate your work in the community. Um, wouldn't it be appropriate for him to see the city manager uh, after the meeting in regards to your nonprofit and, and funding? And so okay. would the city manager be Great. available Thank you. to me? Oh, All right. Absolutely. I All appreciate right. y'all, Council. I'm already thinking about it. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. That concludes our speakers for the evening. If there are no other items for the good of the order, that concludes our meeting. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>